Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you are just finding my channel and my content, this is a series that I do on Tuesdays called Tacky Tuesday, and we go over short EMS cardiology lessons. And today we're going to be going over a second degree type one heart block. So first let's define a second degree type one. A second degree type 1 atrioventricular block, also referred to as a Mobitz 1 or a Winky Bach, is a disease of the cardiac electrical conduction system. It's characterized by the increasing delay of conduction through the AV node until an impulse is completely blocked before reaching the ventricles. And this is manifested on the 4 lead or the 12 lead by a dropped QRS complex. So with that being said, let's talk about some of the other characteristics. Your rate is really going to depend on whatever the underlying rhythm is, but it's typically going to be 60 to 100, and that's mainly because it's still coming from the SA node. And this next one is going to sound super silly, but the regularity of a second degree Mobitz 1 is that it is a regularly irregular rhythm. So it is irregular, but it's not something like AFib where it's just all over the place. You're going to know what to expect because it's regularly irregular. Your P waves will be present and they will be upright. So the P waves will be completely normal. Your PR interval is what is going to gradually elongate until an impulse is blocked. So the QRS complexes that are present are completely normal, but like I said, there will be a QRS complex that is dropped because the impulse is blocked. Some of the risk factors or causes of a winky box include myocardial ischemia, previous myocardial infarction or current myocardial infarction, heart disease, increased vagal tone, cardiac surgeries, cardiomyopathy, myocarditis, different medications can cause a second degree Mobitz 1, hypoxia, or hypertension. So there are more causes and risk factors, but those are the most common. Before we get into the signs and symptoms of a Winky Bach, I just want to make it clear that with our first degree heart blocks and our second degree Mobitz 1, typically our patient is asymptomatic unless they're experiencing some kind of cardiac event. They may not feel any of the things I'm about to list, but chest pain can be present as well as shortness of breath, dizziness or syncope, heart palpitations or feeling like your heart is fluttering, nausea, vomiting, and fatigue. I wanted y'all to be able to look at it on a strip. So if you look at your first PR interval, then go to the second PR interval, you'll see that it elongates a little bit. Then you go to the third PR interval and it gets even longer. And then when you go to the fourth, you notice that an entire QRS is dropped. And that's how you know it's a winky box. So whenever I was in medic school, they taught us lengthen, lengthen, drop. It's a winky box. And I've heard other people say longer, 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 drop. It's a winky box. It's whatever helps you remember. So if you compare this to your first degree, heart block, which if you haven't already seen that video, I'll go ahead and link it up in the right hand corner. But if you compare the two, your first degree heart block does have an abnormally long PR interval, but it's the same for every beat. However, with a winky box, the PR interval continues to lengthen until an entire beat is dropped. So I hope this kind of clears up the difference between a first degree and a second degree Mobitz 1. Not to say they can't be precursors for something really bad or they can't accompany something really bad like a myocardial infarction, but usually a second degree type 2 or complete heart block is going to be more severe or more serious. So let's talk a little bit about how we can treat a winky box. As always, to preface this, make sure you stay within your scope and follow your protocol. But some of the possible EMS treatments you can administer if a patient is experiencing a second degree type 1, obviously a 12 lead, that's how you're going to know. Obtain your set of vitals, get an IV, a blood draw, and treat your patient, treat their complaint. Your patient is awake, alive, talking to you, asking them how they feel. Um, you can administer oxygen. Now, if your patient is symptomatic and they are bradycardic, you can administer atropine, typically ineffective. You can also pace if they are bradycardic and symptomatic. So like I said, this is where we get into following your protocol and staying within your scope. But one of the really good things you could do is to search for an underlying cause. Get a great patient history. Do they know they have a heart block? Have they been diagnosed with it before? Do they have a lot of cardiac problems? Things like that. Are they experiencing a STEMI. All of these are things that you need to take into consideration. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another Tacky Tuesday, and I will see you next week. Bye!